Now in Kenya, we are the voice for quality, colorful, innovative, and functional home furniture with presence in 92 countries worldwide. We have it all. Sofas, beds, dining, and mattresses. Celebrate our end-year sale of 50% off. Yes, everything at half price from 2nd November to 31st December. Visit our showroom at Panasar Center, Mombasa Road, opposite Airtel. Do you own land or property in Nairobi? Hurry and clear your outstanding land rates. We have extended the 100% waiver on land rates up to 15th November 2020. So, collect your invoice from our cash office at Times Tower Banking Hall or City Hall and Makadara offices and pay each day only through the Nairobi County Revenue Collection Accounts at Cooperative Bank of Kenya. You stand to gain 100% from the 100% waiver extension. At the end of the waiver period, KRA will institute enforcement measures. Terms and conditions apply. Enjoy Good Life New Shopping Experience. Seek and you shall find. Visit www.goodlife.co.ke to shop. Search and pick your preferred product. Check out and give your location details. Pick your payment method and wait for your delivery to arrive. It's quick. Click and pick. J, maumivu ya kichwa na kukosesha amani. Kaluma Strong utuliza maumivu ya kichwa, maumivu ya mwili na hata uondoa joto jingi mwilini. Kaluma Strong ina aspirin kama kiungo. Maumivu ya kizidi, muone daktari. Nivea Men Deep Antiperspirant with the power of black carbon formula. 48 hour protection from sweat and bacteria. For a deep, clean feeling that lasts. New Nivea Men Deep Antiperspirant. Nivea Men. It starts with you. Official sponsor of Real Madrid. This is NTV. Good evening to you. It is the 10th of November and you are in tune on NTV. This is NTV Tonight with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. It is day 240 since the first case of the coronavirus was confirmed here in Kenya. And the picture is not looking good. We've got all the details that you need to know. But there are positive stories in the world of health as there could be a potential difference in the kind of vaccine when it comes to the HIV virus. All those stories and much more coming up in this broadcast, plus, of course, the business news and all the action from the world of sports. Thanks once again for being with us. These are the top stories. Tonight, the country records the highest number of COVID-19 deaths at 24, as 1,344 more test positive for the coronavirus. Also tonight, governors want immunity from prosecution while in office, amid plans to quickly close the window for making changes to the BBI report. We propose the removal of collective criminal responsibility in management of resources at the county government level to align with the principle of personal criminal culpability. Plus, fixing the crumbling capital. 
could want also if possible the date of transfer a copy of it senate's plans to restore nairobi as a place of cool waters but governor sonko is still fanning the flames of conflict and also tonight commutes just got a lot easier for nairobians the nairobi commuter rail service is back on track NTV tonight with Smriti Vidyarthi. David Agondoa joins us in sign language interpretation tonight. Now, the Secretary General for the Kenya National Union of Nurses, Seth Panyako, is the latest nurse to test positive for the coronavirus. This brings the total number of infected nurses to 601 and the total number of infected healthcare workers up to 2108 out of which 22 have lost their lives to the virus. Remember these are the people putting their lives on the front line for us. While the rising number of affected healthcare workers poses a huge threat to the country's fight against COVID-19. And it's a battle that we are struggling with. The nation has lost 24 people in just 24 hours, the largest ever number of deaths in a day. The total death toll stands at 1,154. And the cases keep rising as 1,344 more people tested positive out of a sample size of 7,162. This raises the national caseload to 64,588. Out of that, 1,299 are Kenyans and 45 are foreigners. Nairobi has recorded the highest number of infections at 322, Kiambu 221 and Mombasa 133. But there is always this bit of good news and that is that 436 more patients have recovered and this brings the total number of recoveries up to 43,095. Well, despite the rising cases of COVID-19 infections, the rising number of deaths and the directive by President Uhuru Kenyatta to police to heighten the enforcement of COVID-19 regulations, a number of Kenyans are still playing Russian roulette with this deadly virus. They're blatantly disregarding the preventative measures. On their part, the police continue to crack the whip on the rule breakers, making tens of arrests countrywide. But as Ruth Samway reports, some business owners have once again condemned the excessive use of force by police officers. It started off as a night out for several residents of Machakos County, but instead ended up as a night in behind bars. Police officers in Athi River arrested 31 individuals in and around Mavoko Town Monday night for flouting COVID-19 rules. Many of those arrested were found hiding in bars. Out of all the social joints we have managed to get these people from, virtually none has the compliance certificates from our department for the COVID-19. The, there is no markings on the floor in terms of uh, social distancing or spacing of the chairs. Some of them were even so crowded, even to host the people and there are no ventilations. People must not talk with this disease because people are dying from the same and we shall not allow any laxity. People will be found contravening the COVID-19 regulations uh, will be taken in. Ten bars were shut down during the raid. In Tarakanithi, an exercise led by Mero Sub-County COVID-19 Rescue Team along with the security committee saw businesses that failed to comply with measures set by the government raided. Residents from Chuka Town were arrested for behaving normally, seeming oblivious of the risks. They will be arraigned in court to face charges. Bars and restaurant owners along Thicker Road have condemned the excessive use of force by police officers. Owners of Quiba Lounge are counting losses after police officers destroyed property worth hundreds of thousands of shillings while enforcing curfew rules over the weekend. The owners say the matter has been reported to the Kasarani police station. In Akuru County, two major nightclubs have lost their operational licenses. More than 130 people were arrested by police during raids in different joints across the county, 
while 90 others have been released on bail. Police have, however, issued a warrant of arrest for 16 other people who are said to have gone missing after they were released on bail. Ruth Sarmoy, NTV. Well, surely you would just rather wear your mask and so social distance yourself uh, rather than find yourself in that kind of a situation. Elsewhere now, two people were killed and several others injured during protests by Maimahu sand harvesters over an increase in fees for accessing quarries. Transport along the Nairobi Naivasha and Nairobi Narok highways was disrupted for most of the day with the youth battling police. Sand harvesters blocked a section of the Narok Maimahu Road to protest the Kedong Ranch owner's decision to increase the fee payable to access the sand from 1,000 shillings up to 2,000 shillings per lorry. Loaders usually pay private land owners before they're allowed to scoop sand from the Kedong Ranch, whose owners had increased the rate per lorry. Officers from the General Service Unit, the Anti-Stock Theft Unit, were dispatched to the area after local police were overwhelmed. At least 15 youth were arrested. Kidong. Kidong wa tukingia, tukingia, wana tulipisha. Alafu tukenda tukipakia mchanga, tunalipishwa. So tunalipa marangapi, marambina. Ndiyo tumeaza hata kesho, wasiposkia, hata kesho tuko kwa barabara, tutabisha na venye wanataka. All right, let's now turn our attention to the BBI agenda. And there's a chance that the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020 will be published this Thursday, dashing any hopes of including any proposals presented so far. NTV has learnt that there are concerns among those backing constitutional reforms that the many amendments would derail the aspirations of the BBI and perhaps even play into the hands of Deputy President William Ruto. NTV's senior political affairs reporter Kennedy Moredi has more, even as more groups line up their lists of demands. A two-day governor's conference in Naivasha may just have been a waste of public resources and time. As it now turns out, there may be no further changes made to the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020. ODM leader Raila Odinga, in a series of tweets, gave the biggest hint yet that that ship had already sailed. Can you start? Odinga and President Uhuru Kenyatta snubbed the meeting in Naivasha, even though their attendance had been widely publicized and the governors had been waiting all day. The governors, their deputies and county assemblies forum had hoped to present one document to the handshake principles. NTV has now learned that a decision has already been made to officially publish the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020 as soon as Thursday without any amendment other than just minimal editorial work and fast track it through Parliament. For a second straight day, governors discussed proposals they would want included in the document. Top on their list of concerns are how they can circumvent criminal liability while in office, particularly in instances where the DPP issues arrest warrants, and a governor is, in their view, tried in the court of public opinion. We propose the removal of collective criminal responsibility in management of resources at the county government level to align with the principle of personal criminal culpability. If a governor is personally liable, they should answer for it. But if, you know, like your officer is responsible for something, that officer should answer for it. Okay. We are not saying that governors should not answer for things that they do which are illegal. But then you can't punish a governor for a mistake of uh, somebody. Otherwise, you would say you want to punish uh, the president when a minister does wrong. The governors also want the Senate strengthened and made the upper house. They also want the introduction of the position of deputy minister to be picked from parliament. And also the summit, the county assemblies forum, and the council of governors entrenched in the constitution. The governors also want regional economic blocks entrenched in the constitution. We didn't come here to really discuss things that are like personal to governors, like the term limit stuff and so on. We don't want to belittle our debate. Our debate has been how to strengthen uh, devolution. Despite President Uhuru Kenyatta and his handshake partner Raila Odinga snubbing the governors in their discussions today, they have been given a date at State House Nairobi tomorrow morning in an effort to hand over their report and probably see whether their recommendations will be factored in. Kennedy Muredi, NTV in Naivasha, Nakuru County. 
Meanwhile, a section of members of parliament from agricultural regions now want the establishment of a minimum guarantee return fund for farmers as a condition for supporting the BBI report. This fund should constitute a 5% share of the national revenue dedicated to agriculture stabilization to cushion farmers against changing market prices. NTV's Melita Oletengues now reports. Proposals for amendment of the BBI report continue to be fronted. Today, members of parliament from agriculture zones have revisited the issue of guaranteed minimum return for farmers. The fund should constitute 5% of the national of the nationally raised revenue singly dedicated to agricultural business stabilization. A variety of crops will be covered by the fund, including tea, coffee, mira, maize, beans, fruits, among others. The fund will go a long way in stabilizing the listed crops, cushioning farmers when the market price is lower than the expected price of their yields. The fund should as well be used to cater for a national fertilizer subsidy program for our farmers uh, to fund agricultural research and extension services. The MPs have asked President Uhuru Kenyatta to consider a proper framework of adopting the proposals being fronted by different proponents. A formal avenue where you can sit down, present your reaction and be assured of either a yes, a no, a wait, whatever form of reaction that you can get. Meanwhile, tea farmers have welcomed the move saying the fund will help remove the burden of debts. Unatoka kwa sako hii, unaeda sako hii gine na bado huwezi kulipa. Kwa hivyo, this minimum guarantee fund, ata kwa bank ukieda, wataweza kukupea mshahara. Watuwekea hiyo minimum, diyo tu, tu, kila mundu, ata ukivanya kasi yako, unajua pesa ita aguka. With constitutional amendments in the offing, some have argued that policies aiming at bolstering the agricultural sector, the backbone of the economy, are key in the transformational agenda of the nation. Milita, Oletenges, NTV. President Uhuru Kenyatta has urged public servants to focus on service delivery and avoid sideshows. Speaking while commissioning the Kenya Railways Transit Shed and Container Freight Station, the president warned public servants against engaging in any malpractices that will slow down the delivery of services to Kenyans. Na kuangu na kwa wenzangu ambao tukondani ya serikali. Jukumu letu ni kusikiza wananchi wetu na kutatua shida zao sio kuwaongezea shida. Hiyo ndiyo jukumu yetu. It is just a question of somebody taking up a problem and finding a solution to the problem instead of saying fanya hivi fanya hivi ndio mtu apate njia yake ya kupata pesa zake ndogo ndogo hapo. We must reform the way we give and provide services to all our people. Well, President Uhuru Kenyatta is to address Parliament and the nation at large on Thursday on the State of the Nation, coming at a time of the COVID-19 pandemic and resulting economic distress. The President's speech is also likely to focus on the quest for consensus in the constitutional reforms process. Well, team coverage Wednesday looks at the State of the Nation ahead of that address. Here is a sneak preview. Finally, nyoka imetoka. Kabla hatujaongea mambo ya prime minister, tutaongea mambo ya boda boda kwanza. Why you give them wheelbarrows? Why don't you give them your helicopter? We as leaders have also fallen short. And we as leaders this time round have no option but to give our all. Don't have personal protective equipment. And then in Afi House someone is taking tea worth 89,000 per day. This building here has got its fair share of criminals. We estimate that over 300,000 people have lost their jobs. I am jobless. If we don't focus on matters of the economy, we are not going to help this country. Team coverage Wednesday, that is tomorrow at 9 p.m. You don't want to miss it. 
All right, now Nairobi Governor Mike Mbubi Sonko says that he will initiate the process of terminating the deed of transfer that saw some key county functions taken up by the Nairobi Metropolitan Services under the national government. Sonko was meant to physically appear before the Senate to explain the workings and the status of the transfer, but sent a representative. Leila Mohammed has more. It was all smiles in February 2020 when the national government and the county government of Nairobi put pen to paper a deal to transfer four key functions from the city county to a newly created agency, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. A gazette notice that followed, signed by devolution CS Eugene Wamalwa, justified the decision, saying the Nairobi county was in fact conscious of its internal constraints that slowed down the effective discharge of its functions. Without a deputy governor or active speaker in the county assembly at that time, and with the governor having been barred by a court from accessing his office while facing corruption charges, the national government pulled the trigger, saying some of the functions would be more effectively performed and exercised by the national government. We would want to see the date of transfer when the county government signed a uh, the transfer of function from maybe health to Nairobi Metropolitan Services. In the deed of transfer, county public works, utilities and ancillary services, county planning and development services, county transport services, and most importantly, county health services are now under the care of the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Who is in charge? Because this business of where we are going, right? You know, because when I read the governor's responses, this seems to blaming NMS. So how do we get down to the bottom line of these matters? But the relationship between the county boss and the new management has been uneasy. The president himself has tried to mediate, asking the two sides to set aside their differences and work for the people of the great county of Nairobi. Sonko wacha siyasa. Jemedari, Jemedari hana haja. But in his submission to the Senate, Governor Sonko fired at the NMS, accusing it of incompetence, particularly in the delivery of health services, especially after a mother was forced to give birth in public right outside the gate of Pumwani Hospital as health workers downed their tools over a number of grievances. Because we have an issue of money not being released to the county. We are almost having services uh, stalling. On why certain projects have stalled, Sonko noted that a grant of 172.2 million shillings from the Danish government to support level 2 health facilities is still untouched due to suspension of IFMIS by the National Treasury. He also states that this suspension has strained the county's finances as another 17 million from Danida for level 2 and 3 hospitals and a 79 million shillings grant from the Ministry of Health lies untouched. The governor appears before this committee on Monday at 11 a.m. without fail. Leila Mohamed, NTV. Now, a report from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions reveals that 135 high-impact cases involving more than, get this, 224 billion shillings had been prosecuted as at the 30th of June 2020 and are still pending in court. The cases involve senior government officials and cases of significant public interest. Now, out of these cases, seven involved cabinet secretaries and principal secretaries, 11 governors and senior county officials, while seven involved members of parliament. And during the same period, a total of 157 billion shillings was recovered in cases involving corruption by high-ranking officials. The DPP has also established new units within his office, including the regional offices and the Victim and Witness Facilitation Unit, where witnesses will be traced, facilitated and prepared for criminal trials. All right, you are watching NTV tonight, and at this point, we take a break, but we leave you with our moment of calm. Now, enjoy images of the marigold, a deep yellow-orange flower.
These ones are produced in Mexico, and it is in fact a traditional flower used in the Day of the Dead celebrations in Mexico. Well, despite the morbid connection, it is still a simple but beautiful flower. We'll be back in just a moment. So vile nasema wacha nikubatie statistics ni kuna gamia 1500 tunakuwa drapo gamia na kuwa 1600 2000 natengeneza ladha natengeneza viatu wallet kibeti nauza hapa na batia wewe 50% ah wacha niweke credit nikupigie namna gani wewe hii mambo ya kuishiwa na credit kila saa come on nunua hiyo simu ya Vodafone calling by Bad Fiber is zero shillings per minute and it is not expensive Only 2999 Kenya shillings. Alo hali wali wa wa wa. wa. Hata fadhali hiyo credit ikae ninunue simu basi. Faibika leo na Vodafone for only 2999 Kenya shillings. It will always be free to call fiber to fiber. Wa Kenya. He fight hatukuchagua lakini tuko na choice. Tuchague kujilinda. Tuchague ku protect familia zetu. Tuchague usafi. Kuosha mikono. Kuosha manyumba zetu ndio tulinde watoto wetu na tuvae mask. Future yetu iko mikononi mwetu. Kenya, let's do it for the ones we love. Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. Sona moja kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi pata ushauri wa daktari. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. My primary school life was difficult but my mom struggled and I, I managed to finish the class in 2016. But I knew back in my heart that when I was getting a, a scholarship, I couldn't make it for the high school. My friend told me all benefit of going to apply scholarship, school fees, shopping, transport. I knew that there's no any option to get the school fees. That's why I went to apply the scholarship. My mom was called back and told that I didn't go the scholarship. I knew it that my dreams would come to pass. 2020 when the coronavirus pandemic came, uh, I was very very worried about my KCC. But thanks to fly, there was light system and the radio that will continue lessons with it. Now I can read at night and wake up very early in the morning like four to go through my books. Before I got the scholarship, it was like darkness was before me. But when I got the wings to fly scholarship, Light has come to my life, and I am sure that by God's grace, I will go to the best university in this world, which is Oxford, to partake medicine and surgery, and I can see my future being very, very good. What I penda, what I penda, and them. Yeye. Na hao pia. Kila mtu ataipenda. Pata kila kitu upendacho kwa Mpesa kupitia Star 334 hash. Kwa kuweka kila kitu kwa namba moja, tumerahisisha mambo ili uweze kuendelea kufanya vitu unavyopenda ukitumia Mpesa. I would definitely give this next time. Cousins Baby Gift Pack, a carefully selected range of safe baby products with natural goodness, trusted for decades by millions of moms across Africa. Cousins Baby, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> 
Rafina, listen to me. I no. am not... You didn't care if you've hurt Renata, who's been more than a daughter to you, to give Matias a position that he doesn't deserve. I have no idea who your informant is, but it's obvious that he hasn't been feeding you the whole story. Then you could be in serious trouble. Oh my goodness. Do you know them? Get your value-added plots today by cash or through our installment plan. Call us today on 0790-300-300. Optiven Limited, the pay in real estate.